Hi, Jackie. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm well. It's so exciting to see you. I know. I know. It's so lovely to get a chance to have a sit in a blether. Yes. Uh, we thought we would do this uh, because we are co-hosting the Saturday, sh the, I always say this wrong, the Scottish Shrug Club Cal <laughs> for the Scottish Yarn Festival, which will be on the 9th and 10th of September this year in Perth. And so you are all invited to knit one of these gorgeous shrugs with us. But we thought we would introduce the shrug pattern to you and the design and the concept behind it. And Jackie is, of course, the designer of the shrug. So who better to discuss this all with than, than her? So she, I think you've brought along a stack of, um, <laughs> of shrugs to show us. But before we get to all of that, can you just tell me a little bit about kind of the genesis or the origin of the shrug design and kind of what really led you to it? Well, yes. Um, thank you for having me on your YouTube channel, by the way. What oh, any time. <laughs> I, I feel like I almost feel like we should have a poem because that's how I'm so used to being. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, I uh, there's an American sportswear designer named Claire McCardell, and she has well, it's sportswear, so it's full of plaids and stripes and simple silhouettes. And she's just really quite brilliant. Her designs are so simple. And there was a photograph of her. I don't have any of these books with me right now, or I'd show you, but a, of a model wearing a shrug and with a very nipped in waist. And, you know, one of these skirts that are shaped like that, a little white skirt. And somebody had been like on the photo, they were just pulling on this and it just made great lines. And I loved it so much. I believe in that photo, it was Houndstooth. And then there was um, a book that had um, a shrug pattern in it. And that's what I used initially about 20 years ago. And it was a um it had color blocking three you know like a fade and i i were my very first one i think pretty much just followed um the numbers from that book but i had seen a sweater on j crew that i really liked and so i wanted that instead so this was my very first one and um and what happened is I think I knit these like 20 years ago and I knit so many of them. I quickly just started making them any size I wanted and I didn't consult. It, it's just a one, it's just a two, you know, of ribbing, but um, they achieve that same ethos that the Claire McCardell sportswear line did of something bold and simple and flexible. So this, and this is something where in my family, we would joke about people who like this feeling of being um, wrapped and people who don't. And my sister definitely does not like this feeling and I definitely do. And <laughs> <laughs> anyways, this is the project that I would knit um, that was effortless for me. But, and it really was an opportunity these were all done in superwash, so they get kind of bigger and bigger. And I, I don't know the order of them, but it was the opportunity for me to play with color that I liked. You know, and they're just very bold and they could be worn indoors or outdoors, which I loved about them. So I am going through a stack of those with you right now. I knit so many of them, I didn't have to think about it. And I started, so initially I was just, I copied a J. Crew sweater, this striped dimension, and I figured it out. Then I started to think, oh, how fun to have a band of color. And again, I suppose it reminds me, even back then there was Claire V was um, around and she had these little clutches that had I don't have one. I, I don't know why I have this here right now, but there was a band of color right here. And so I made these and it was very fun for me. Um, 
but it was never random. I always thought about the numbers, you know, this is half and, you know, and I also enjoyed how you could use them to, you know, emphasize different, you know, the different ways you could wear them. And I continued to play, you know, so I have stacks of these and it was just my way of expressing colors I like. And I've done this before, but, and this yarn, um, again, it, it, I think it ended up having a finer gauge than the Saturday shrug pattern that I published, but I never really worried about how many I cast on. Okay, I think I have one more from that era. Here it is. I know this one is just like Cascade and, you know, so that was it. I And then I sometimes did solid ones. So then we fast forward, you know, I don't, these are things I wear all the time and people often would ask me for the pattern, but I couldn't even direct them to the book because I had deviated so far from this book by then that mine weren't <laughs> like the book. And I would just kind of lay my, like I do one and I'd use it as a template to do the others. Like I'd know, okay, I like it because there's a range of inches that I found acceptable both in length and width. So mm -hmm. it was just an easy template to design off of. I knew that from the past. And then um, what was it? Was it just this year? I think it was. Just this year, I thought um, we were celebrating the end of the year. And Caitlin and I, I have a podcast, Caddy Jackson, it's, and we wanted um, to have, um, we do this thing called bingo at the end of the year. And this year, my mother had, had, was going through cancer and radiation treatment, and the knitting community was so helpful to her. And so I wanted, I was finally, I was like, I'm going to get around to writing this pattern up because I people have periodically asked me. And so I wrote it up, and this is that one. And I, this I knit in lamb and kid yarn um, while I was on Bainbridge Island. And, and so what was super fun, what happened with this is I knit it and Caitlin knit it and Caitlin from Wanderlust Knitter and Sarah from Lamb and Kid. So it became different because you could see, um, I believe actually these are all from that era. You could see everybody's creativity at once, not just mine. So I don't know, it went from addition to sort of L, uh, you know, multiplication, because you could see how what this is what Sarah did, she took each one of these stripes and did a different color. And then Caitlin took her leftovers and put them in as pinstripes. And then um, Caitlin from Wanderlust Knitter, she just had different colors than I did. So all of these are my riffs off of what they did because we had such a wonderful time together. And when I wrote up that pattern and shared it with the knitting community and said, thank you for supporting my family and my mother in particular, um, people discovered, oh, there's a lot of sun coming in. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's, it's a rainbow. It's lovely. <laughs> um. I think it caught, I, 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 even like right when the pattern was hitting and people were asking about gauge and yardage and things like that, I'm just like, just you wait. Once you find out how easy they are to knit and how adaptable they are, but really, so they're very fun to create, but they're even more fun to wear because they're just, you just literally, you just throw it on and it, it takes care of itself. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I, I do remember being very excited to see the first finished product start to filter in, like when Sarah and Caitlin and Caitlin finished theirs and they liked it. Oh, I was so thrilled. So it did end up the Saturday shrug and we ended up having a knit along calling it the Saturday shrug club. And this yarn 
all these kind of original yarns, it was very much kind of in Todd, which is this, you know, yak and cashmere yarn that's very amazing. But but this is, you know, Cascade 220. I knew that you could have, you know, you could have workhorse yarns and play with color or you could have luxury yarns. It just, it would work either way. And that was just a thrill to see it take off and to see people again, because it's just a one by one rib that's very forgiving. So needle size and yardage and gauge varied a little, but so many of the questions were coming from that place of needing to, you know, get exactly this. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then they, the conversation kept, I think I just need yeah. a little, <laughs> um, the conversation would shift toward, there we go. Yeah. Um, expressing their vision as people mm -hmm. got better at them or not better, more familiar with what yes. they wanted. And, and so, my biggest thrill right off the bat with the Saturday shrug was just that shift into everybody becoming their own designer. And, and that's why I'm thrilled that, you know, it's a free pattern and that people can look on Ravelry to get ideas from each other. And there's a hashtag. I think it was accidentally stumbled into, um, a virtuous, positive feedback loop of people encouraging and inspiring each other. Mm. And that made me so happy instead of, which can happen from time to time to everyone, including me. Oh, she has that. And I want that thing. I, I, I it's a pattern literally for you to listen to what you want and make that. Yeah. <laughs> and I love like that. Yeah, the accessibility of it is a really beautiful thing, you know, because, you know, it is a, is a pattern that beginners, you know, somebody who's just, you know, relatively new to knitting can absolutely tackle. And like you say, you know, price point wise as well, you work with what you have. Right. You know, I think one of the ideas behind doing this particular cow for the, for the Scottish Yarn Festival was that people could go through their stash and perhaps there were some beautiful skeins that they had picked up at a previous festival and here they were going to be coming to the next one and perhaps they hadn't gotten round to knitting it up because goodness only knows when we go to a festival it, we get sucked into buying those truly gorgeous skeins that we don't really know what to do with. <laughs> but we just have to have. Um, and it, we thought if people have those... Or, you know, you can you can go through your stash and see see what you have and clear it out a bit before you before you get to the festival. Or if you wanted to buy something specific from the festival vendors themselves to actually craft your own after seeing everybody else's and feeling inspired by it, then you know it was a really good way for people to access the yarn that they have right now rather than, you know, having to, you know, you know, outlay a lot of money in order to be able to access the cow. Yeah. Yes. And then there are, are all these imaginative ways to knit yourself into the story. So, for instance, when Caitlin, who is Wanderlust Knitter on Instagram, knit these two colors, then I wanted to knit these two colors, but differently. So they were sister shrugs. You know, and we gave them names like this one was the Huntress. And so when you go to a yarn festival, you can even consider also if you whoever you're going with getting yarns together and splitting them and having reciprocal shrugs, which I think is so much fun. Oh, and I, I love that. <laughs> yeah. And when I went back to Bainbridge, in the spring, I wrote it up because those were wrote up. I did some videos about how to do the tubular cast on and off, which I was thrilled mm. to put out there because that's my f often with one by one, it's my favorite. <laughs> and so there was video support for that, which makes the teacher in me happy. <laughs> and then the initial one, the initial Saturday was a, a worsted yarn held with a lace weight. And then this one is a DK yarn held with a lace weight, which of course gives you straight up worsted too. So it gives you actually 
more numbers if you don't want to figure it out for yourself, you know. But again, mm -hmm. it was so interesting because when Caitlin did hers initially, Caitlin of Caddy Jack's Knits, she found it was a little too small for her when she mm -hmm. cast on. So she just like, she just said, oh, I'm going to put four more stitches on my needle. Mm -hmm. So there were just so many ways it was, um, I don't know, easy and flexible and could meet you where you were at in your knitting knowledge. Mm. And it's such a comfort. I find it incredibly comforting to wear. You know, I like to wear mine even just around the house because it does give you that extra coverage around. I, I find that I lose a lot of heat from this part here, but also around the back of my neck. And so it just kind of keeps that, those parts warm, even if I don't want the rest of me to be covered in a jumper. So it's perfect for this time of year, particularly in um, in Scotland, because our temperatures, we're having a grim summer. It's very, it's very cold and rainy and wet and <laughs> and grey. Uh, but we are, you know, generally around about in the 60s uh, in Fahrenheit. So it's just this kind of, you, all, you constantly feel as though you're looking for a transition wear, you know, that kind of in-between season. And I think that this um, kind of garment, this kind of accessory is perfect for that, uh, for that kind of year. Yeah, kind of yeah from... Um, from a style sense, I just, I, and from an emotional sense. So emotionally, mm. I do love having, I don't know, I love having that covered and cozy. It just, too. it makes me feel secure, at ease, and feminine, and flowing, and all of those things. It just gives me a very good feeling. And then anytime you can layer, easily layer, pattern or texture or you know color hooray you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh I loved making twin sets out of them and just matching the shrugs to different shirts and different mm -hmm. tops and different jackets that was very fun and so that was the first one and then the Friday one came along so that was a, you know, I have some examples. This was the one I released, so I'll show so that. This is, this, this is the Sunday one. Sorry, this is yeah. Sunday. Yeah. So Sunday was, you know, the same idea, just much bulkier. And um, let's see. And, you know, there they are. And they have this certain, um, you know, I don't know. I, I feel like they're kind of like street shrugs. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a more, I, I, I love them so much. Yeah. They make a little bolder of a statement just because of their chunkiness. Yeah. Um, and they're super, super fun and fast. Like you literally, the Saturday one, you could knit over the weekend and be done. And this one you can knit in one day and be done. And I picked up with the Sunday, I guess I really felt like it, the rugby stripe was the big wide one was where it was at. So that came out at VK, um, VKL in New York. And it was so fun then to go to VKL. That was my first time like being out in the world with knitters and see knitters wearing their shrugs and being so happy about it. I mean, that was the happiest thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that so much. I mean, what a thrill to get to spread a little joy and ease after, you know, especially again, it was a gift giving back what everybody gave my mother, which was so much love. And even if they didn't, didn't know my mother and didn't know it was a gift or anything, I still feel like it was embedded in the embedded in it anyways. So that was, um, uh, lovely and then we have the friday shrug <laughs> and but let me just there are a few more samples so yeah some, go for it yeah um this is where so i'm pretty. starting to play with you know intentional twin sets it's an mm -hmm. idea i'm working on um mm -hmm. where you play with the stripes so i have this is where you amplify your luxury this one was knit with cashmere so a neutral 
But you know what? I just, I can tell you that um, there are things that I made 20 years ago that I gave away, but I never gave away my shrubs. They're yeah. just such a purposeful little stack of options because you can, like, this is not an inch, this is not exciting necessarily what I'm wearing, but then you throw this on and you're, you know, it's just, they're so good. And then <clears throat> this idea was, you saw before, but it was fun because I made, I made one for a friend. So we have twin ones. And I do really love that idea that knitters do where they, um, where they knit things and then they have that person with them too. So they have the literal comfort of the knit and then they have their imagination where it's like, oh, I'm thinking of my friend who I knit this with. And the idea behind these were, of course, that you could take, they could have two stripes and do it you know, just one by one, mm -hmm. and then you would give them your two stripes for their edges. So that feels fun to me. Mm -hmm. And I give these all these names, like the rugby one, the pinstripe one, <laughs> I, just because I've talked about shrugs so much. But anyways, that's Saturday. And then there's Friday. Natural Friday. <laughs> so, and we should just say these are all free patterns. Yep. So this is the um, this Friday shrug is two fingering weight yarns uh, marled together, and I'll how about I put one on the dress form up here so that we can see another. <laughs> so these two are oh, beautiful knit in elmer and then i have one that's knit in linen quill and one that's knit in my mother's stash and they're fingering weight yarns and you just follow the moral pattern and what i loved about them and it came off of the design came for me from a blanket i saw that i loved i loved the proportion Mm -hmm. of um, getting to introduce another color. So you have your your main sets of colors, you have neutrals, and then you have this little pop, this little tip. And so I made a chart for the Friday to show all that. And what I note, like Elmer, what I designed the pattern in is um, a heavier fingering weight. So my numbers in the spirit of these shrugs are probably in both of these, there's more stitches because mm -hmm. these are lighter finger weight weights than this. So people do have to continue to try on and think about it, etc. But this was just straight up stash for Sally. And you can see how the design, again, um, it has the same proportions of all of these. So there's no, mm -hmm. it's not that you're required to use a kit or have anyone's particular um this takes a little more you know thought to plan out what do you want for your central pattern what do you want for your neutral what do you want for your tip but again the playing is so much fun so that's the friday shrug another free one i just love every single one of them like look at this <laughs> No, I, I know. And the only thing that I'm funny about is I, sorry for the siren. <laughs> Just emphasizing that these are really beautiful. <laughs> uh, you can wear it any way you want. For whatever reason, I like the tip down here. Mm -hmm. you know, so, so a lot of people had been asking about the shrugs if they were designed like in this shape. Yeah. And they just get worn. And they so just, if you yeah. wear one direction, it ends up doing this. Because I have I have this one. Oh yes. And I wear I think I I think I wear it when I'm looking at it. I think I've always worn it with the um with the gold. 
so it's up closer to my neck, but I could be wrong actually. I'm looking at it. Also trying not to interfere with my microphone, but I'm probably doing terribly oh, with that. But you. but there we go. <laughs> but yes, I've got the yellow down there at the bottom. But you but you can switch up. You can wear them whichever way around. I actually chose to add that yellow in because I had just finished a cardigan using that color, and so I wanted to be able to add that in so that I could wear it with that cardigan. But I can wear it, you know, obviously with other things as well. But I really like that idea of taking like the small pieces from um from jumper designs, from jumper patterns that you've been knitting, and then adding that in so that it references in some small way. But it's not like super matchy matchy, but it's just like there is a like an echo or something that's being carried through the accessory. Absolutely. I, I love that too. So to think about to start planning it's take a favorite jumper though and take the little piece from that so it just read it just yeah references yeah yeah absolutely mm -hmm. oh jackie these are all so beautiful and like i was saying they are all free on ravelry i know that ravelry isn't accessible for absolutely everybody and so i had already said you know if anybody wants to access the pattern but can't go through Ravelry to get to reach out and, and get in touch and we'll we'll sort that out for them. So we'll we'll figure it away <laughs> a work around um so that everybody can participate. Um, yeah. But we're so looking forward to you know being at um the yarn festival and see I wish you were coming. I wish I, you were gonna be there. <laughs> you have love that so much. I'm just well, thinking that that what I'm going to have to do is I, I think I'm going to buy some um, fingering weight skeins of yarn and then I'm going to split them and send them to you. Oh. Um, or maybe I'll just bring them with me because I will be seeing you in October. So, uh, yeah. so yes. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I, I, I'm really thrilled that uh, this, that this festival chose this pattern to have people sort of, again we just psychologically we knit and we psychologically prepare and anticipate festivals you could go to a festival and be you know just go as an act of commerce and get your yarn and get out or you can go as an act of friendship as an act of showing up and witnessing the knitting community mm -hmm. and so this is just a way to um you know if you're wearing these at the festival, I imagine it's an opportunity to just go, oh, look at how she, he or she expressed that, you know, design. And it's just fun. Absolutely. And of course, we do have a hashtag on Instagram, the Scottish Shrug Club Cal um, uh, hashtag. And so you can go and check out and see what people are doing. And obviously you had the the Saturday Shrug club at cal uh run earlier on this year so people can go and check that hashtag out on instagram as well for inspiration but you know even if you aren't able to come along to the festival you are more than welcome to participate in the cal and maybe it's a way of you know participating in the festival without actually being there if it's not accessible for you and you you live too far away or it's uh maybe you can even as you're knitting set your intention for one day visiting Scotland and we can <laughs> we can see you at the festival at some point in the in the years to come <laughs> absolutely absolutely and there are more um just designs in my head that I want to put out there and more sizes of these just in case you need you know another go at it because I, I I I do love the fact also that once you do something again and again it just starts to inhabit you and then it and then designs just yeah. just creep up on you you don't have to seek them out <laughs> and then all of a sudden it's there <laughs> so what's the best place for people to find you jackie oh um i have instagram that's easy it's caddy jacks knits is the instagram and i also have a personal that's my podcast that i do on youtube and then i have a personal instagram j domini rose domini is my middle name and <laughs> and i like it because it means our lord in that <laughs> <laughs> but yes because there was already a jackie domini rose i couldn't believe it on instagram <laughs> 
That's amazing. <laughs> but it's not a very catchy handle. I admit it. Like it, <laughs> it you could think it's JD Omni Rose, but Rose is spelled like the flower. So you can find me at, at either places. Wonderful. Well, I will pop links to that and everything that we've been talking about, the patterns and everything, and the festival. Links to all of that will be in the description box below for people to find. Um, but yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for being so generous with your time and with your shrugs and with your creativity with the world. Um, I know that everybody's going to really benefit a lot from it. And I know that they're going to have a lot of joy uh, knitting their own shrugs as part of this cow. So thank you so much. Oh, you are so welcome. And I guess I want to say since the shrug pattern isn't a, even a year old yet, I'm kind of excited because it's about to enter its first fall and its first season where people do a lot of gift exchanges. And so I do think it's such a loving gift to give someone and not have to worry about how it fits. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> this is so true. Yeah. <laughs> so true. And uh, yeah, and I'm so make them for yourself at first, fall in love with them. And then non knitters in your life, they are going to really thank you. <laughs> they so will. They so will. Thank you so, so much, Jackie. Thank you Absolutely. so much. Have a wonderful festival and oh, yeah. enjoy all those beautiful yarns and people. We will. We will. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>